ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, goblins of all ages, welcome back, because we just couldn't wait till Sunday, for another edition of the greatest goddamn D&D streamer in this world and the next here, welcome the goblins under the stage. <laughs> <laughs> you got Carlos Garcia here, formerly known as Soul Rack the Destroyer, not known as Rampoo Magnasty. Oh, yeah. And uh, I ain't here alone. But we do need to get a party name so I can call us that. But I got Manta Zermeister here. I got Laxton Bershad. I got Crick. Crick, crick, and of course, to take us on this epic adventure. If this son of a bitch doesn't try to kill us first, he's the greatest goddamn DDDM in all the land here. Yeah. It's Nate Gonzalez. Take it away. Yeah. Boo, thank you, Rampoo McNasty. Uh, it's not me that's trying to kill you guys, it's the dungeon master in me. Uh, welcome back, everyone, tonight to tonight's Tuesday night short edition of Goblins Under the Stairs. Let's get you guys a quick little recap and get into this thing to make the most of our time. Uh, last time we were together, you guys were starting off in the Myconid Caves, just learning about the blight that has taken over them, uh, seemed to be taking root in this crystal cavern within the caves there, uh, where a sulfuric noxious smell and smoke was emitting from. Uh, you guys talked to some of the Myconids, including uh, some of the adults that were taking care of Zanensa, the queen of the Myconids, who was unconscious and uh, looking very, very rough. Uh, after speaking with them and assuring that you were there to help, you continued on to this crystal cavern. Uh, we investigated it a little bit. Um, Crick stuck his Richard into some of the crystals and some fume drakes <laughs> emerged from there, attacking you guys. Uh, after dealing with them, you realize that's where these orange crystals were growing from in the cave. Uh, if you knocked them out, broke those, Potentially, that would create a, a vent ventilation area for the smoke to uh, to exit through. And after you broke these crystals, a obsidian black round stone, almost like an egg, rolled out, cracked into a thousands of pieces, and out of it came a fire snake attacking you guys, quickly taking down Rampu and Manto. Uh, but of course, Langston and Crick, um, the healers of the group, did what they could, calling off to one of the Myconids. Uh, coming back to heal you guys and then um, finishing off this fire snake once and for all. Uh, seemingly able to clear this room and the cave of the source of the blight, the Myconids thanked you. I uh, left you guys with some parting gifts of some mushrooms and you guys continued on your way back to Dragon's Rest in the evening. Uh, as the night sky was enveloped, uh, enveloped over top of you guys, you could see a dazzling display of what looked like shooting stars flying out of the sky um, at first couple in um, in uh, s with short seconds in between and then after a f seeing a few of them rapidly firing and lighting up the sky uh, seemingly somewhere up to the north around the sword coast I guess spoke to Renera and uh, Tarek about this gave Tarek some of the mushrooms and ate some stew and got a good night's rest as you guys wake up in the morning feeling rejuvenated uh, already the kobolds are up and about, having a good old time, and uh, getting the day started. And the day is now yours to do as you please. <clears throat> Langston jolts awake with nightmares of the goo. There's no way around it. Langston's still thinking about it. He jolts up as soon as sun breaks in the room. He's like... <clears throat> And I like check everywhere to see if there are any of those little like nanobots crawling over me. What is it, Susan? Is that what you what, what you named it? You named it Susan. That's Susan. Uh, fantastic. Just one of them is Susan, or all of it is Susan? It's Susan. It's Susan. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm checking for Susan, just making sure there's nothing lingering. Amazing. So I don't <clears throat> prob probably so wake up Captain Rampoo in the process. <laughs> You're, you're so I would say, um, there you go. Ahead. So I was, was technically just lying there with my eyes closed, but I was awake for a while. And uh, I'm kind of, I'm in this weird feeling. The closest way I can really describe it is. Kind of like when you've been on a roller coaster all day in a theme park and then you lay down in bed and you kind of feel that jolt that's kind of like 
and the more extreme version of that is happening after being in that in-between realm essentially twice in such a short time where I almost feel kind of like I'm, I'm like I'm in a dream world that I'm just you know it, it feels weird just everything feels very weird but when I hear uh, Langston wake up and start bugging out uh, in my head I think he definitely got it worse than me <laughs> and then I just wake up and I just let him do his thing you know, we get up and let him do his thing he earned that <laughs> thank you so I'm, I'm I'm sitting there staring at the door for, you know, six or seven hours and I guess Manto's in the room doing his thing and eventually I just stand up and I walk right over to this little desk over here in the corner and I just take my hammer and I just start cracking the shit out of this desk and it starts getting really, really loud. I'm throwing the papers, I'm going into my bag, I'm pulling out tools. You know, you you just hear grinding and gearing and all this stuff. And then eventually I kind of turn around and um, I have this shield. It's, it's, it's basically a tabletop with straps on it. But um, Manto notices there's like a little smiley face on it. And it looks at him and it just frowns instantly as soon as it sees him. And then I just go, all right, ready? You're an interesting fellow, aren't you? I am a fellow indeed. All right, let's get the rest of the gang. As long as you're done, whatever you're doing. I tell you what, up. Why don't you go get the gang? I'll be, I'll be, I'll be right out. And I start like taking off my clothes. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be out. <laughs> As you guys go outside, you just hear banging and dust coming from under the door and just very, very loud noise. Um, and eventually, I walk out and my armor—it's just jet black now. Inky. Hell yeah. I, uh, when I see Craig now, looking all badass, in black. So now that's the look of a first mate. Aye, aye, Captain Number Three. Oh, he's moving up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my head of thing of moving up. That's pretty. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys uh, make your way outside, see the morning sun shining down, some of the kobolds out and about. As I mentioned, you can hear them chattering. Uh, you look over to the dragon statue on the edge of the cliffs. You see Varneth climbing up on it, scraping uh, off of it. And she looks down at you guys and says, Fucking seagulls are bastards. <laughs> scraping away. Uh, you see her grab up cloth and cleans it up a little bit. Uh, spits. Pff, wipes it a little bit again. And then begins to climb back down. Uh, morning, fellas. Sleep all right? You could say that. Not as well as I would have hoped. I had Crick as my roommate. I'll let you figure that out. Like a baby. <laughs> they sleep, right? <laughs> that made one of us. I think it made the only one of us. <laughs> <laughs> you say, uh, Tarek told me all about uh, your guys' adventures yesterday and how you were able to help out the Mykonids and whatnot. Uh, good on you. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's what we do. Hey, Varneth, between us, um, you know, Tarek, he, he seems like a great guy. Do you know much about his background at all? I'm not talking, like, what he does or occupation-wise. I'm talking, how did he get here? <laughs> What did he do here? What did he do before this? Do you know where he came from? Uh, you know, to be honest, uh, a lot of the people that have come here, come and gone, uh, have a, a little bit of a history, so to say. Uh, a darker past, and that's usually why they come here, is to make a change in their ways, uh, and take, you know, start walking on a different path in life. And you know, Tarek, I never really heard the full story about what's going on with him or where he came from. We kind of got a little cold whenever we would talk about it. 
Uh, but, you know, I'm sure he's no different. Uh, everyone's got their stories, but, you know, as we believe here, you know, the past is the past, and as long as you've you know, truly never done something you know, horrendous, there's no reason why you can't uh, put a, one foot in front of the other and try to make a change. I understand that. Uh, I mean, kind of going back to him being cold about his past, I mean, you don't think that's hindered your trust at all or potentially sparked your curiosity? <laughs> Boy, if, if I told you all that about what... If I told you about all that went down, I'd probably burn up both your little ears. Mm. Uh, you know, we've all got stories, and I'm not one to judge him for potentially what has happened in his past either. I agree. Sometimes a man's past is left just right there in the past. I only judge those by the way they treat me. And that's right. So far, it seems to be treating us pretty good. And that's all I can say as well. You know, from my experiences with him, things seem to be kosher. And then I just... I actually, I I bite my tongue for the time being. Uh, but I'm just, I just kind of turn back to Varnith and just say, Thank you. Uh, it seems as if uh, the day has started and we should probably uh, go check out the uh, the Compass Rose see what that's all about. Well, uh, we should see, uh, speaking of the devil, see if, uh, Tarek has any progress with any of our mushrooms yet. I believe he said by the morning he'd have something. I think that's a great idea. We might want to get some supplies before we check this out. Uh, and then we'll the uh, old Mary Road. I'm on board. He turned those ruby more out than anything. Well, let's hit it. Woo! Right, you guys Bye, continue. Yeah. Take care, y'all. Uh, and if you... Sounds like you're going to make it out to the Compass Rose uh, today. Uh, just take the ship about a mile and a half up to the, the northern part of the shoal of the island and uh, can't miss it. But no. Figure. Okay. So you guys continue on going by uh, Crick uh, and, and everyone, of course. You guys walk by Myla and uh, her assistant standing outside of her shop lately. And uh, as you guys walk on by, uh, see that Myla's eyes go wide as she looks at Crick and says, Whoa, 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 whoa. stop there, little, little buddy. Hey, hey, uh, where did you get that armor? As she flips down her glasses and begins to examine that. She knocks on it a couple of times. That is spectacular work. Thank you very much. I I made it myself. Yeah. As I kind of start standing up a little extra straighter. You are really something. I could, you know, I could have used armor like this when uh when my my brother and sister they well <sighs> we we got jumped by some sturges, some of these bat-like creatures and uh, hungry, blood-sucking, icky things. Uh, well. Left me a couple of marks all over my skin, and I, I could have used some armor like this if if I was in a fight. Next time, next time I'll be prepared. Was was that on this island with the Sturgises? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, my, my siblings, though, they I don't know what they did. They they, they left and they followed along with them, and uh, that blue wormling spark render. Ah, shit. Um, I, I just know they're up to no good with them. Oh, so your siblings are out on this island with the Sturgeons. They're somewhere. Yep, yep. I mean, I don't think they've gone too far. <laughs> they can't swim that good. Should we kill them? Oh, no, no, no. No, no. Okay. If you, if you see them, though, please bring them back. I miss them dearly, and I, I hope they're okay. I think that's fair. I'll let them know Myla misses them, and that she'll probably give us something nice if we bring her siblings to her. I'll be sure to let them know. That's right. M Mech and Min. If you see them, they're out there somewhere. Mech, Min, and Myla. 
That is three, probably the three best friends. Those two, I think, are better friends than I am. I'm just, I, you know, I got my, my things here. And kind of shows you, like, a, a, a whodunit that he pulls off his, her back and uh, kind of twirls some, some um, uh, a, like, a, a spinning kind of flashing mechanism on it that kind of just makes these sparks. And she's ah, I'm working on it to make it a big kaboom, but one day, one day. As, as she does that, my, my shield starts to smile, and it's... Ah, uh, I do love a good tinker. <laughs> oh, you are fun. You are fun. Hey, Laylee! I'm gonna smack someone on the head. I told you to go get that box. Is that, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna run back in the sh in the shop and uh, back away. You guys have a good day, okay? I just turn and start walking back over to uh, Tarek. So you guys make your way over to Tarek. He's standing outside of his uh, shop area, uh, taking care of the garden out here. Uh, takes his gloves off as he sees you guys approaching. Wipes him off, his hands off on his pants and, hey, hey guys, uh, you guys uh, looking a little bit better than you were yesterday. I'm glad to see the rest uh, took care of you. Like new. No. I'm just staring at the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm uh, sure I'm sure you're here for for some goods. Uh, I was able to get three three vials put together for you guys last night, and, this, and one or two last night, one this morning. Uh, so here you go. He goes back into his shop real quick, grabs uh, three healing potions, and brings them back out. Uh, <clears throat> just kind of hands them all over to Langston. You're in charge of these. Uh, you gave me all the mushrooms, so here, and just gives you all three of them. When uh, he oh. when he goes inside to grab those potions, mm -hmm. I take a really hard look at like the setup of like his uh, his shop inside, and see if like there's anything that like immediately catches my eye, any like like safe or you know just stuff like that. Yeah, make a perception check. Seventeen. 17. Ooh. As you're going around and looking in there, you see some alchemist supplies and uh, like beakers and Bunsen burners and uh, some like forceps and small like tweezers and things like this. Uh, you're looking around for like some sort of safer, you know, you have a keen eye for these types of things being a thief yourself. Um, you don't see any like hidden levers or, or uh, doors or even like, you know, a very secure kind of like high profile safe kind of thing anything that he you'd think someone would put like valuables inside of that's not where he sleeps that's just his like office i guess it is where he sleeps oh okay okay gotcha mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. yep. he hands over the potions over to langston uh yeah you're, you're gonna be in charge of these buddy Oh, okay. Um, thank you. I appreciate you working so fast. I, think you said you get some back. I didn't expect, you know, half. Thank you. Of course, of um, course. Uh, I'll try to get the other three uh, by tomorrow morning, and then uh, the the Ruby Morels. I'll I'll have you by the third day. Oh, I appreciate that. They, I can promise you, they'll go to good use. And I'll turn around and give a a, a potion to um everyone else so everyone gets one because you know i'll be like this is kind of like my whole thing and if needed then you know we can go from there but you know we all y'all risk your tails so i think y'all need these and i'll just hand out one healing potion to uh everybody well, that's nice i have this huge childish smile as he hands it to me like just unbridled this just, mm -hmm. just love I just like <laughs> at Crick's like head. Like he's like your boy Crick, your armor looks fantastic. Is that a smiley face? It's the shield even goes bigger. Oh my god. Ear to ear. Looks like a U. You are a mixture of an anomaly and pure cuteness, and I'm trying to still decide which one I'm leaning towards. <laughs> well gents. Okay with that. We don't have too much time to uh, sniff each other's farts, if you know what I mean. So, why don't we hit the track? <laughs> I'm absolutely on board. Let's do it. 
I, on my way as I walk by Craig, though I say, but it is a very nice armor. And I keep going. <laughs> he's just, you know, he's like, he's like four foot one inch now. Oh my gosh. He's, <laughs> he's, he's getting up there. He's getting so Amazing. tall. So uh, you guys are heading on out now to head to the shipwreck. Yeah, buddy. All right. You guys make your way right. down the cliff side, uh, back down to the shore where you see the ship still tied up. Uh, you hop on in, pull the rope in, set sail, and begin heading up the shoal. Let me go ahead and like uh, show you guys the aisle again. Mm, 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 mm. So, yeah, we are, of course, here at Dragon's Rest. Uh, you guys begin to sail up north past some of these rocky islands to the north, uh, where you guys are eventually making your way all the way up to the very tip. Uh, again, about two miles, so it should take you guys just about uh, a little under two hours to get there. Um, as you guys are traveling... I've got my navigator tools out. Mm -hmm. Helping, uh, helping captain. Okay, yeah. And as you guys are traveling there, anything going on as the waters are uh, pretty easy today. Sun is out, and uh, weather is perfect for sailing. Excellent. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm smiling that now we're in a bigger ship, right? It's not... Uh, it's the same boat. It's the same one. It's the same boat. Okay, mm -hmm. but I'm... I'm just happy to be back out at sea. Still smiling. <laughs> still smiling. Man, still cheesing yeah. off that bow. You guys are staying close to the coast, as you would know, of course, in a boat like this. It'd be wise not to go out into the open waters. Um, but as you uh, continue on, uh, yeah. I don't know what you're going. Cool. Uh, about hour 45 minutes or so. Eventually, you guys make your way up to the northern part of this rocky island. Uh, where you can see, whoops, this keeps on like jumping my screen. Um, you guys approach up here, you see waves lap against this derelict ship lodged against a ridge of rocks, and you notice now enormous dragon bones in the water as well. Um, a faint odor of rot wafts on the sea air, along with the sound of screeching seagulls and the roar of the surf. A tangled mess of tattered sails and rigging hangs off the starboard side of the main deck. That's what you can see, like, right here. Uh, offering one possible way to climb aboard. And at the stern, uh, down, like, here, you can make out a gaping hole in the hull beneath the water line. Underneath the water, of course. Hmm. Uh, what about all this stuff in front? Is this, is this climbable, or...? Uh, that is, like, the rock and, like, the, uh, dragon bones there. Um, Got it. It's, you could, uh, it's just there is, like, you can literally climb up this, uh, you know, park the, uh, the boat up around there, tie it off somewhere. Uh, but yeah, you could climb up that, too. It's just you would actually have to do some, like, physical climbing to get up the rocks and up the boat side. Yeah, so it's pretty much, like, the way I'm, like, visualizing it, it's, like, it looks like it pretty much just crashed into rocks and it has just stayed there for quite some time. Is correct? Exactly. Okay. Hmm. What are we feeling? We feeling top deck or lower deck? Gotta start with the top, my boy. Uh, I'm a so bottom let's deck lower guy. anchor. I had a feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um, as as we're kind of like approaching where we're like going to climb, I'm kind of checking out the current to see what it looks like along like all of like the rocks like around us like is it like is it consistently is it consistent is it inconsistent is it flowing towards the rocks is it flowing away like is it changing at all like what's kind of going on no uh no need to make a nature check or anything as you guys just observe the kind of uh general nature of the way the water is flowing currently uh waves are lapping up against the ship along the starboard along this like you know the right side of the ship that you guys are coming up upon uh just kind of s crashing into it here and there and the water seems to just be flowing the natural order of how you would imagine uh it should in the sea here uh is, was there something 
maybe in particular that I didn't answer that you're looking for? Uh, well, because obviously it's odd that you know we're we're trying to figure out like the cause of why it, the ship crash or why sure. multiple ships are crashing. So I didn't know if there was like any noticeable change. Like or inconsistencies in like the currents at all. Yeah, the, if it was like sure. natural, basically or... like any geysers or anything yeah. like that of the sort, or like, or... like a maelstrom or anything like that. Yeah, there's there's nothing. Uh, it seems pretty natural the order of the gotcha. water around here. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, I look around and I look at the crew and I say. Any of you gents, uh, know anything or two about magic? Right oh. here. And him. Well, <laughs> any chance you could potentially, uh, something, something just feels very off about this shipwreck being here and everything that's going on. And I don't think that what took us down was what you would say natural. So if you could detect any sort of magic around here, maybe there might be some left over. Because I have a feeling that's what brought down this ship. So. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think that'd be super helpful. I, I mean, can I like roll like... I guess a general arcana check, because I don't have detect magic stocked. Can I um can I just roll like a general arcana check to see if I can like glean anything from, you know, any remnants on the boat? Sure, yeah. Hey, how about I would I would um I would pull um uh Frank out and start poking around with my little <laughs> magic wand with the It's Richard the thing on it. Richard, Richard, shit, forgot. I was just Frank like, there's another one. Frank was last name in the mix. <laughs> so wielding. Yeah, Frank was yeah, last. Yeah, yeah, Frank was the last one. Richard, I pull this Richard out. Richard. To kind of, yeah, exactly. To kind of assist Langston, um, see if I get any color. Okay, uh, Langston, go ahead and roll again. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, one better, fourteen. Nice. nice. <laughs> um, we take it. Yeah, as you're as you're observing from here, uh, you, of course, like as you mentioned, you don't have detect magic, so you're kind of just visually observing and kind of you know with your your um, your gut feeling and kind of your, your 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 senses in general, trying to figure out what kind of arcane or arcane magic could be around here. Uh, and as like has been mentioned a few times um, amongst a few of the cloister residents of the island, uh, this island seems to have some sort of ancient Drag draconic magic to it upon amongst the scars, as Renair has mentioned, uh, uh, along the island here. And the, the, you see these dragon bones uh, that this ship is crashed into along the rocks here. Uh, in your mind, think maybe there's a connection along that, but there really isn't a pure, like, oh, this is magic. So potential influence from dragon bones and draconic magic, but no way to guarantee. Just yes. kind of that. It, it's here. There's something. No way to correlate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think. I think we'll we'll feel it on the ship if we get closer. And maybe uh, to take some of the dragon bones with us back to uh, Tarek or Varneth to see if maybe they can study it to see if they can pick anything up from it. We definitely can consider. We should tread lightly, just in case of the ancient magic at foot here. I do not want to disturb anything else. But we yeah, can sure. hopefully gain some more from this. What uh, Not a super superstitious person, but... Uh... A little stitious. A little stitious. Really stitious. Uh, the the really slightest so bits cannot <laughs> emphasize... Tremendously stitious. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, are, we are out at sea right now. and you know, Things get dicey. Dragon Especially uh, around islands. I mean, you're 0 for 1 on ships currently. Hey, it's like, it's um, like, like 0.5 for 2. This one's uh, been holding up so far. Hey, That's I'll, right. give you, I'll give you 0.5. So technically 1 and 1, because we did succeed in the last trip. This is our second trip in this ship. So yeah, you're 1 for say, 3. Say. <laughs> the odds got worse. Where are these other 
Trip's coming from. <laughs> I don't think he's just The Mike and Ids. The Mike and Id math. The Mike and Id trips. Anyways, enough dilly dally. Make sure that anchor is nice and taut. Again, we don't need uh, we don't need him going zero for three. <laughs> that uh, would be up to my crew. Top so lower the anchor, you bunch of scallywags. <laughs> the ship. Crick just starts lowering the anchor. He's real happy right now. <laughs> New armor on a ship. <laughs> happy as pie. Life is good. <laughs> is he plank? He's gotta be plank. <laughs> <laughs> Plank's always happy. You saw the picture I sent in the game log, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm referring yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just permanent crick face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys pull up alongside the starboard here. You see this uh, dangling mass of uh, overflowing debris, tapestry. Don't call Rampu names. <laughs> flowing off of it. Uh, and you guys anchor the boat secure off to the side here. And you see a way for you to climb up and get aboard the ship if you'd like. Do it. All right. Who Do wants it. to go first? Uh, Captain, make sure it's safe before you proceed. Uh, you gotta take a step off. Right. Rampu begins to ascend up the debris here, and as he puts one claw in front of the other, climbing up, suddenly he's at the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so sad. laughs> <It's> so tense. <laughs> And if he was gonna make it, anyone else? I, uh, I feel before I pick up the wood, everybody else, I feel you know, with my boot, uh, yeah. the wood on the ship, see if it's sturdy, and we're not gonna collapse when we're all on it. Yeah, as you feel it, um, it feels sturdy enough, it is a little soggy. Uh, you look at the walls in here, and they're pretty soggy as well. They have the sickly black and green look as algae and barnacles grow on them. Uh, but yeah, the, as you step here, where you are currently, it, it feels safe and secure. A little, a little soggy. I look back, but good. Uh, look back at the crew. I don't know how much longer this ship ha will have before it completely keels over. So, watch your step. Fair enough. I will I'm move. And then start helping Langston up since he looks like he's the next one over. I'll give it the old try. Yeah. Begin to climb up, following after Rampu, and easy enough, you get onto the top, and uh, Ooh. one by one, the rest of you, I'd imagine, follow suit. And uh, as you guys all are up yeah. here now, you can see that the moldering wood of this deck, as uh, Rampu has discovered, is slick with the algae and seawater. And amid the tangle of rigging, you can see splintered railings and stray seaweed. Uh, you also spot boots and bones and bits of gore that seem considerably more recent than the wreck of this ship. Uh, you can see stairs that lead to the upper decks at the fore and the aft, and doors that lead into cabins underneath those decks as well. The main mast remains intact and mostly upright, topped with a crow's nest overflowing the debris. Uh, a staircase near the mast and a large hatch on the port side both lead down into the hold. And you said that the boots and stuff look newer than the ship? Considerably. So someone's been there since. Okay, so look. I take out my swords. And uh, I point to the boots. And say, whoever came here after the ship crashed. Definitely didn't stick around for their boots. Watch out, crew. I immediately something might be here. I immediately run downstairs to see if I can find like any treasure or valuable goods. I look back at everybody else. That is not what I meant by be careful. <laughs> okay. like, I mean, he's being opposite. careful and thorough. <laughs> As you see him running, like <laughs> stomping <laughs> down the thing. <laughs> it's very elusive. Uh, man's got drive. You gotta respect it, really. <laughs> Man Manta, you're running downstairs. Big time. Okay, give me one second. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> it's turbo time. 
because I can move <laughs> one player to a scene at a time now. Oh. Ooh. Uh, oh. So, Manto, your your scene changed. Yes, it did. All right. The descent to the lower deck is chilly, wet, and unsettling, as seawater obscures the floor and sloshes against the hull. Decaying crates and barrels are scattered all around, some floating freely and others stacked in the corners. You hear the splashing as a walking corpse lumbers towards you, wading in water that doesn't quite reach its knees. You look over your other shoulder as you see another one lurching its way towards you. <laughs> I immediately run back upstairs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so did you find any treasure? Like, no, like nothing? Um, I'm like, gents, you can keep it on the screen. And I'm like, gents, we have company. And I run back downstairs and draw my arrow. You see them moving forward towards the steps now. As as Manta uh, runs upstairs, what do you guys do? Uh, we're about to roll initiative for sure. But... I uh, literally just look back at them and I just shrug. And well, their time's have come. <laughs> you, you did. You did say tread lightly. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go. All right. Uh, imagine. Crick and, and Langston. Oh, yeah. Following behind. Just, yep. Right. Langston 100% misunderstood company. It's like, oh, they have people here. Oh, fuck. <laughs> He's the zombie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. As you guys all run down the stairs, the zombies have made their way closer to the stairs now as Manto stands down there uh, ready to attack. Uh, everyone go ahead and roll initiative for me, please. I cannot seem to change the <clears throat> right now. Let's see. Ooh, that's a big one. Ooh, who needs dexterity? Yes, <laughs> I cannot change the music, guys. I'm sorry for it being uh, not combat, but hey, it's something. Okay, um, let me go ahead and go top to Langston. And Langston, you are up to start. Amazing. So, um... Are we we're all are we all still clustered on the stairs or have we like kind of like ventured into like the bottom? Um say that as I was saying, the zombies have each <clears throat> just put them five feet closer. Manto, you can go five feet closer as well, and then you three can arrange yourselves within that ten foot radius of the stairs wherever you'd like. Okay. So could I like You said I can get five feet closer? Correct. Okay. Beautiful. So then I'll just kind of move, I guess, with my movement. Can I, like, move over here? Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So I'll How see... deep is that water, by the way? Uh, like it's, like, sh shin deep, yeah. How is Crick looking? <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> it's it's thigh deep on Crick. Oh, my good God. <laughs> it's waiting. Thank God, just standing a little taller. You see air bubbles flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Chris, here's the plan. Woo! <laughs> He's just standing out of the water. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh Completely God. unfazed. Um, so, I see these um, undead, and uh, I'm just like, okay, round two. I'm not really fucking around this time. And I would like to channel, use my action to channel divinity with Radiance of the Dawn. Hell um, yes. I can present yeah. my... I can present my holy symbol to dispel any magical darkness within 30 feet. If there is any, then, you know, Godspeed, get out of here. Um, and then they must make a, a constitution saving throw of my save, which is 12, or they take 2d10 radiant damage plus 2, and then have on a success. And for that, because I have to present my holy symbol, I want to, like, take my scarf out and have it over my neck and kind of, like, go back and forth and, like, do a little shimmy towards them. <laughs> 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 just start doing the Claire dance. Claire Kelly dancer. <laughs> we, we are prepared this time, motherfuckers. Just Incredible. Like Level two. Incredible. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as you go, just uh, real quick before I forget to mention this as well. Uh, where Langston is standing right now, it's about... Uh, you know, knee deep, and then we're down by the starboard to the south, the right side of the ship. Technically, it's sh it's more shallow, but this whole area down here is difficult terrain. Just so you guys know, uh, so your movement is uh, doubled. Uh, but yeah, as you go ahead and cast this uh, divine light, oh, yeah. uh, it's 
had rather yeah <laughs> you, you have to difficult uh, so you could yeah, so yeah we hit water we <laughs> fast as fuck yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh what is now, this a jet technically ski? <laughs> would this keep still be in the land area where i'm good with uh you time? know what technically yes i would say that this is coastal so you guys are good okay oh, let's get ripple so uh i'm sorry the save is wisdom 12 um constitution it Con. is constitution saving throw and 12. DC 12. okay go ahead and roll yes. your damage because i have a okay a thing here Ooh. okay so they will take 10, 10 if they don't see and they will be frightened as well right um, or feared I this, this is just um that would be if I turned undead okay. I can do radiance of the dawn or turn undead and gotcha. I went just All full right, on so let's go ahead and do you know this. We, we had to floss with the scarf and show them we mean business orange <laughs> succeeds uh gray fails um yeah. okay. so does he take half damage uh yeah so um orange will take half gray will take the full 10 yes um Okay, and as so that they... happens, you hear them screaming, crying out as their flesh is bubbling and boiling with this divine light. And you guys hear another scream uh, coming from the west that you did not, uh, you know, see <laughs> another uh, visitor, another guest down here. Uh, oh! Yeah. As... I'm just like... Oh, there's one more. Welcome to the party, and I'll just turn and keep shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. All right, thanks and nice. Anything else for you? Um, so for this, I would like to do a um a bonus action here, and I will throw um because I can do still do spells as a bonus action. I'll do a shield of faith on our boy Crick here because he's gonna be getting into the mix. <laughs> Okay, and uh, remind me what Shield of Faith it does. It's plus, it's plus two, two, right? Yep, he gets yeah. plus two to his AC for the duration. And Beautiful. I don't believe it is concentration. It's just for ten... Oh, no, it is concentration for ten minutes. So. All right, let me go ahead and put, throw a concentration reminder on you then, and we are good. Anything else? That was all for me. All right, this zombie, uh, blinded by your brilliant light, a flesh ripping off of his uh, body he uh, recoils and then immediately begins to lurch right back towards you uh, the source of such uh, divine light and reaches up his arms and just tries to slam down at you with them uh, or one right. of them I will um, okay. do warding up oh. yeah no warding flare or, or yeah I um, guess I misregarded I mean it would have right? been disadvantage yeah okay. so does that mean do I still burn that or um, said we have to call that like before as a reaction. We, you do, so I was yeah. Trying to. Um, okay. Fuck it though, it's all good. Don't don't worry about it. I missed. Okay. Uh, he just misses that and kind of tumbles over a little bit after he misses. And Crick, you're up. Crick takes a step forward, turns to the the gray one, and give him a little stabby stab. Okay. The six. Ooh. Six. No, no armor on these guys, but still, six will not do it. Ugh. And uh, then you know what? I'm just gonna like bonus action. I can do an unarmed strike if I have two weapon fighting, right? Um, maybe. I believe it needs to be a finesse weapon specifically. Oh, okay. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. I actually have zero damage for unarmed strikes, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Tickle, tickle. But I swing at I squeam, swing at him anyway to try to get his attention off of uh, off Light of Langston. Weapon. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, anything else for you? You want to move? No, I just I, I moved up a foot. That's it. That's Man, good. Uh, <clears throat> yep, the one next to me is getting a sword right to the jaw. Okay. For 12 to hit? 12 will hit. Oh, fuck yeah. And give me uh, 7 damage. 7 damage. And then... Bonus action. Um, am I... So... Okay, never mind. And... I immediately disengage. Okay. And run over to here, and upon that process, I'm like looking left and right to see if there's any crates that kind of stand out to me. Okay. Um. Yeah. Go ahead and make perception check. Seventeen. 
17. Yeah, Ooh. there seems to be a few crates in here that seem like they could have uh, some contents in them. Um, looks like some by your, the south of uh, the starboard, like where you are right now. Except, okay. like, directly south of you. Yep, and then, obviously not right now, but, like, in the process of, of like, this combat, I guess, for each turn, I'm also not only just for something that's valuable, but something that may have caused this incident. Like, is there something that, and maybe it's in a crate, but is there some, like, crate that would stand out for, like, maybe these undead to want cause, like, the magic to cause this ship to crash, vice versa? Like I said, obviously not right now, but that's going to be kind of what's going in my head as combat's going through. Cool. Love it. Anything else for you? That is my turn. All right, Rampu. Okay, first things first. Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark on the orange guy. I don't know why I died, just would fly. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, on this orange dude. Okay. And it says that I can use all weapons, essentially. It's, it's not just a bow and arrow. Correct. So I'm gonna go... Yep. Run up, run up to him, and uh, swing my swordy at him. Go for it. Yeah, so if you hit that three right there, will be your extra hunter's mark damage. Perfect. Uh, where did my sword go? There it is. It's in my hand. Take my strong Ooh. hand. And eight. I'm gonna lucky that actually. Um, you don't need to, cause an eight will That's hit. That's twenty. <laughs> um, wait, well, so I, I think Lucky is, is only if you miss, though, so let's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bud. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, it doesn't say if you miss whenever... So I'm going to hit the noise. But before yeah! the outcome... Uh, <laughs> You have to do it before the outcome is determined. So yeah, if it hits, then it, it hits. Um, but go ahead. Okay. That's, so that's roll damage, and then we'll add three to it. Uh, it might roll the full crit damage right now, though, because you rolled a crit. We'll see. Yeah, it's gonna. I mean, so ignore yeah. that. Even though. Sorry. First die was a six. So eight total. Yep. Well, Rampu just. Uh, where do you stab him? Right in the eye. Right in the eye. That's what I was gonna say. But <laughs> so you run up to him, pierce the blade right through his eye. Blade <laughs> goes out the back of his skull. You have to like put your hand, your claw on his face to rip it back out. And you watch as he, boom, tumbles and falls backwards. Um, so that was eight total. Yep. Uh. Da -da -da. Five plus eight is eleven, right? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that hit, he falls backwards, and he should be fucking dead. But you see, he sits up like the Undertaker, looking right at you again. One eye uh, completely hanging out of his skull, uh, and he is still alive somehow. Um, but I, uh... anything else for you? He's prone. Nice. I look back. At the crew, I say, you know the deal with these guys. But, uh, it's time to kill them again. <laughs> I literally rolled exactly what I needed to to have them uh, pop back up. All right, this uh, back here, you guys hear sloshing in the water. Um, Langston, you turn your head as you see this feral-looking ghoul, uh, flesh hanging out of its mouth, uh, kind of tinted blue flesh, as it, on all fours, oh. just begins to run up towards you. No, thank you. And as it does, <laughs> to the left. it reeks, reaches out and tries to rake a claw attack on you. Uh, 15 to hit. That will miss. Ooh, just misses. Ooh. Uh, as you, your shield goes up and blocks that um, scratch attack from hitting you. Uh, he's feral in front of you, still like drooling uh, um, ridiculous amounts. And the zombie down to the south who just popped back up roar, stands up using uh, the rest of his movement, and he tries to slam into Rampu. Uh, 15 to hit. That hits. The 7, yeah, max damage, nice. The 7 points of damage to you. 
Okay. As he is pissed. Um, and that brings us to the top, Langston. I want to turn to Rampu and be like, Captain, be careful. They get more dexterous the more limbs they lose. We've learned this. <laughs> I'll just, um... Oh, that's God. Right. That's I right, can't. Rampu, make a concentration check for me, please. Uh, Ten is what you need to get to keep your hunter's mark up. Okay, Jokus. Uh, and I think I get some kind of advantage with my hunter's mark, though. Uh, Ooh, I'm definitely gonna lucky that. Lucky. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Fourteen. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Yep, you're good then. Hunter's mark stays. Uh, Langston. All right. So it's been a bit for me. So this is gonna be a silly question. If I want to cast a spell and they're in front of me, if it's like a ranged spell, it like is it with like disadvantage or is it like I can't do it? If it's a that you have to roll if it's a spell attack, then it's disadvantage. Mm -hmm. But if it's a save that they have okay. to do, it's it's fine. It, then it's normal. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Um. Okay. That clarifies this. I am in a rock and a hard place. Um. I'll just fuck it. You know the old song and dance. I'll just sacred flame the ghoul in front of me. Um. DC twelve deck save right. the ghoul. All right. Eight. Yeah! <laughs> Show me one! <laughs> Two! Hey! Right, one damage. Ooh. I'll take five. Five radiant damage, nice. Alright, um... Can I tell... Does this do, like... I know that, like, radiant damage helps, like, kill them. Are they, like, susceptible to it, or is it just, like, base? Can I, like, tell anything at all from our previous encounter? It seems like it's hurting them as it would anyone else uh, but yeah okay. what, you, what you have in mind is correct about uh, needing it to kill them fully cool beans um <clears throat> then yeah I think that is all for me because that is an action to do that um I will just kind of get ready to rip the warding flare uh, for my reaction just kind of be like Ah, take that, and then just like look, but like with my shield, with only my eyes showing, just like oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. Um, that'll bring us to this next zombie. Then uh, he just missed you, and as he misses, kind of tumbles a little bit. As Crick comes up and tries to stab him, uh, he sees this little robot guy and just slam down on him. Now, uh, let's see for a eleven. Eleven will miss. Uh, as he misses and tumbles a little bit, sloshing in the water, it's Crick's turn now. I kind of look at Langston and go, he's yours, and I kind of walk over, and I'll take the opportunity to attack and everything. Okay. And I just go to the big guy, and just, that misses. Ooh. No, that hits, right? <laughs> right off, worth it. I oh, you have 19. Plus two. Wait, oh yeah, I'm that's 20 right. now. Wait, how do you have 18? Uh, I got a shield and a plus one on my from all this uh, stuff. Uh, okay, me. gotcha. Yeah, baby. Okay. Um, and Damn. I just go into this guy with a with a fury of a four foot one inch <laughs> pain. <laughs> all right. The dagger. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna add four to that. I'm gonna er, a D four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna add a D four to that. That will the eleven. Just hit. Oh, <laughs> man. All right. Meets it, beats it. That was a four right. damage. So I hit him. I hit, like, I, like, hit him with the dagger. And, like, I let go for a second. And I, like, slap him in the face. And I pull the dagger out. <laughs> just to, like, make sure he's, like, staring at me. <laughs> he's so violent. He's got these razor sharp teeth and these jagged claws just staring at you. He's got this insatiable hunger for flesh and as he sniffs down at you doesn't seem to see much of that right there there uh, is still flesh on me okay <laughs> <laughs> it's not as delicious uh, maybe we'll see if we can find out alright anything else for you <laughs> that's it alright I see this new uh, fella so I then you know draw back an arrow and uh Shoot a bow over at him with Boom. your sneak attack. Come Do on it. now. 16. That hits. Hell yeah. I am <coughs> 7. Sneak attack. 4. So 11 total. 11 total. Mm. 
whizzing through the air. Your arrow just knocks right in between Langston and Crick, piercing oh, yeah. into this ghoul, right into his jugular. <sighs> you hear him just gurgling right in front of Crick. Uh, this vile liquid, not blood, uh, something disgusting just spraying all over Crick right now as he just falls back down into this uh, water, splashing there. Uh, life Beautiful. Was... And then, uh, again, quickly, I'm just surveying. You know, I I saw some valuable crates to the south, or what I may think is valuable, so I'm going to head south. And again, just looking to see if there's something that sticks out that would have potentially caused uh, this accident, like something that these undead were kind of looking for. As you look around over here, uh, throw a perception check for me, please. Oh, uh, 12. 12? Um, 12's not bad. So, yeah, you look around here, and what you're mostly seeing is nothing that kind of falls in the lines of that, but like more like a, like a crate of like bottles of wine and uh, some spices and... Uh, candlestick holders and you know, things, odds and ends, things that were maybe being um, sent on the ship for trade, essentially. Okay. Yeah, nothing that, that really falls in line be... of like a, that. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's fine. And my turn. Okay, ramp you. All right. Uh, first things first. Store tank. Okay, he is not prone. Yet. Ten hits. Uh, ten. Yeah, buddy. That's this plus Ooh, eight nice. plus. Ooh, that's a stupid one. Okay, so, nine damage. And two. You stab through him again. Yeah. He. <laughs> you see as he falls back. Uh. Boom. Yeah. Just stays down on the ground underneath the, his head. Tilts to the side. Falls underneath the water. And no bubbles or anything seems to be pulsing out from there. He seems to be completely still and lifeless now. Sweet. I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, recast my Hunter's Mark on this yep. other guy. Perfect. <clears throat> and that is my turn. Love it. All right. This ghoul is dead. The zombie is dead. That brings us to Langston. Woo! Um. Yeah, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, I will go ahead and just rip another sacred flame at him. That's a three. Oh my gosh! New day, who dis? <laughs> Level two. Level two. And, and eight. with that, exactly what you need to rip him up with this radiant light. Uh, Raining down on him, you see his flesh boiling and burning over from this screaming, howl howling here, uh, spinning around in the water. He just splashes down, trying to put it out until he's just floating there. And he is dead. Flossing. Kind of floats down towards just Manto. Ugh. Ugh. Nice to get him out uh, first thing, gents. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. We Did not out. mean to send him your way. Out of initiative. I kind of... I kind of uh, Kick him as he starts drifting towards a uh, rampu. And I just move over. Like, <laughs> and then I just I I turn my attention directly to the crates that were of potential interest and start like taking my crowbar and yeah yakking into it and pulling away the wood. <laughs> see what I'm getting myself into. Yeah, as you use your crowbar to crack into this, it takes you about like a minute of prying it, wedging it back and forth. Uh, go ahead and roll d6 for me. Show me treasure. d6? Mm-hmm. Man, I've been getting a lot of fours on the d6. About average. Yeah. Uh, you pop open this one crate, and you see a bunch of, like, straw and, uh, like, brown paper in there, uh, protection for what's inside as you dig your, your, uh, pincers or whatever you call it, your... Your paper, hands or whatever. Protection. Got it. Yeah, you, you dig your your hands in there and you start to pull out uh, what looks like a pair of candlestick holders carved out of bone and they uh, resemble uh, dragons in flight. Oh. Those are pretty sweet. 
with a lot. Dra dra with dragons, you said, flying on them? Yeah, yeah, they resemble dragons, the candle holders themselves. With dragons on them. Ooh. Yeah, I, uh, I stuffed those away in the bag. And, uh, again, proceed just kind of down the line, opening crates, opening crates. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, you go through a few of them. Uh, as, as he's doing this, are you guys doing anything else as well? Um, uh, seeing that he's pretty much just uh, looting everything, I'm mm -hmm. going to go back <laughs> up to the top of the ship, and uh, I want to go check out the other side of the, sh the other end of the ship. Is, is there sure. another level here? Yeah, so yeah. there is another level down uh, where you're standing right now, Crick. Oh, it goes down. Water. So never mind. I'll yeah. go down first, and then I'll. Yeah, it's side. it's all submerged underwater down there. But there is a, uh, there is an area down there for sure. And actually, Crick, as you, kind of stand, down there and peer down into the water down there, you get this overwhelming sensation inside of you, almost like something was just, like a flip, a switch was just flipped inside of you, uh, some sort of programming, inside of you has been activated. Is that a good thing? <laughs> so I, I guess um, so I guess I would get just kind of like an internal sensation, and it, it's a little odd. I would kind of look around here, see investigation, but then I'd probably turn towards the stairs. And as I move towards the stairs, do I get like further excited or yeah, like it's it's the... coming from down the stairs? Yeah, as you as you look down there, um, you can definitely sense. And something inside of you, it's almost like, like I said, programmed. Like, there's there's something like almost like your purpose was to come to this area. I kind of look at everybody and go, I, I think we should go deeper. And I just kind of start walking down the, the path without them. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Yeah, as he crits, oh, begins to descend down. <laughs> as he begins to walk down the stairs, just like, um, like in a movie, you know, walking through like a swamp or something, just slowly begins to descend into there until his head is underneath the water, and he just keeps on walking further and further into there. And you guys just see Crick walking through this space now. Uh, and as he does that, uh, do you guys do anything else as well? Um. Can I kind of investigate the body of the ghoul? Seeing as all we've run into so far is, like, the zombies, I kind of want to just be like, this is something new that we haven't seen yet. Can I see if there's, like, a cause for this, or if this is the same thing, but, like, a variant? Just kind of, like, you know, and also see if it's got anything on it that might have turned it. I don't know. Yeah, just make, kind of overall investigating the... You can make either an investigation or, like, a arcana check. Okay. I will go arcana. That is better for me. Okay. Does not make a difference. All of them. No, so, like, what you're kind of we're perceiving is pretty accurate. Like, unlike the zombies who you look at them, it seems like maybe with their clothes and their gear, it seems like maybe they were former members of the ship's crew. Uh, just kind of like with uh, Rampoo's crew when you guys got back onto the shores of uh, of Dragon's Rest of uh, Stormwreck Isle. You guys met the zombies up there who seemingly were his crew members, but this one, this ghoul, seems to be just some sort of, like, vile scavenger drawn by, like, the presence of, like, the decaying flesh and the rot and everything down here and just looking for something <clears throat> to feast on. Okay. Uh, not yeah, exactly sure next. the root of it, but uh, it's not uh, totally out of the world or realm of possibilities of, like, these types of creatures that come and you know, scavenging for this kind of flesh. Okay. Just wanted to check to see. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Rampu, anything for you on this level? Or are you following Crick? I followed, I followed Crick. Okay. Uh, real quick, as Manto has gone around and begin to pop open some of the lids of these crates and everything, uh, finding assortments of different contents, you find like five bottles of very fine wine, all you know, packed in straw as well. Uh, you find like a 20 pound sack of cloves. You know, some spices. Uh, you find ten small little, like, uh, bars of silver. Uh, you find a loot 
that's also like packed very nicely inside of like some straw. It's got this beautiful mother of pearl inlay. And then inside of a little tube in that loot, you find a spell scroll as you kind of twist the cap off of it. And, uh, and the spell scroll is a spell scroll of command. Nice. And then I see, like, I kind of see out of my peripheral vision, uh, Rampu and Crick going downstairs. And I'm like, nobody checks uh, services without me. And so then I take... <laughs> Do I, you have to go below water to, uh, like, you have to go underwater to get Correct. downstairs? Beautiful. That's fine. I will uh, go ahead and pop a uh, wind spore mushroom as I run and just kind of dive down the stairs. Okay. <sighs> dive on down the stairs after then. And Langston, do you follow too? Uh, yeah, I'm coming over. Like, as I'm coming over to Manta, I'm like, Hey, so did you find anything you need help? And we're going downstairs. All right. And I'll just pop this room as well and just turn around and follow right after him. All right. We're microdosing. All right. So one by one, uh, first, of course, high. Crick and Rampu make their way down to the hold, uh, submerged underneath the water. Okay. And yeah, as you guys make your way down here, the cold water engulfs you as a strange undersea world is revealed now. You see colorful seaweed grows over the shattered hull, especially around the gaping hole in the stern of the ship. And you see tiny little fish dart around uh, the hunks of debris and cargo down here. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Under the sea. <laughs> no, we said the, the Donkey Kong uh, underwater music. <laughs> Shit is ethereal as fuck. <laughs> Right. And uh, and it's totally underwater, right? We're like holding yes. our breaths right now. You're you're holding your breath right now, but you notice as Crick is down here, it doesn't seem like he's just kind of nonchalant about this. I uh, very quickly start looking around. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna swim towards this bottom end. Let's see what's over there. Am I being, like, pulled in any direction, Nate? Um, yeah, so as you first... Uh, I'll actually stop Rampu real quick. And uh, you would first actually notice, all of you guys, as you go down here, this chest that looks like none of the others sitting in the corner. Uh, standard kind of, like, treasure-looking chest uh, with a lock on in the front of it. I would uh, look over at Manto klepto ass and just like signal over to the chest <laughs> it's like you got this type thing <laughs> and I'm like and I'm like swimming swimming swimming, as, swimming. As, he, as he gets close I put a hand out and I kind of like grab him and then I and then I pull out Richard and I just kind of poke at the at the chest just to kind of I don't know is there any malice around this uh, no, yeah, you, you, you look around, it doesn't seem to be, like, any sort of, like, you know, traps or anything set up around it. Okay. Then I kind of let go at, let go of Mantis and go, just kind of point at him and say as clear as day, like, go ahead. Thank you, and I think I know what I'm getting myself into. God. <laughs> and then I just whip out my thieves' tools, kind of spin them around, or at least attempt to, but the, we're underwater, so it's kind of just... <laughs> That's yeah. And then, <laughs> Damn, I'm he's just, got talent. I'm like, I'm, I'm in there, like picking the lock, feeling each little rivet in there. And I'm like, all right, yep, number one, four goes up, three, no, six, <laughs> yep. And then eventually, hopefully, just kind of <laughs> unclasping. I yank that thing off like a child opening a present, a present on Christmas morning. And hopefully flip that thing open. Love it. Go ahead and make a uh, dex check and add your proficiency. Uh, uh, yeah, add your proficiency bonus to it. Give it to me. Yeah. Nice. Proficiency oh, bonus. Nice. Finally, a, a dex check that worked for me. There you go. So, so, so that's 24 Holy total. Shit. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Time. 
uh, Manto put on this display swirling around the uh, <laughs> the thieves tools and underwater here C -c clicks everything you see a couple bubbles um, pouring out of the lock mechanism and finally he clicks it and the top of the box opens on up bubbles rush out of it and a packet wrapped and sealed in kind of like a wax fabric rises up after the bubbles and I snatch it I'd go to grab it with too. the hardest wrist okay. <laughs> guys both grab that looking at each other I opened it let's go it's mine and I start pulling it down <laughs> <laughs> um as you say this, I, I, uh, as as Crick says this, actually, like you have a sense that something down here is something that you are searching for, you are after. But as this pops on up and you grab it, that sensation leaves you. As you let Manto kind of hold on to it, the sensation comes back and you feel it pulling you towards the, <laughs> the east. I uh, go ahead and open up the. Uh... A little scroll to see what's in there. Sure. Uh, before I forget, as well, in the bottom of the chest, you also see another pouch there, uh, holding um, some gold coins and a couple of turquoise stones. Uh, you also see a pair of boots in there that look like they're uh, the leather working on them. It looks like they're like, scaled with leaves. Um, nice, like green look to them. And uh, let me see if I can actually send a picture of that. I'm sorry, how many gold coins? Uh, after you guys would count them, it'd be... Let's see, there's four of you guys. Uh, there would be... Well, there's 55. 55 total? Yeah. Okay. I cannot click this for whatever reason. Whatever. Uh, so, but you unravel that wax fabric, and <coughs> you guys see this pop out of it. Whoops, oh, let shit. me go ahead and send this to the game log, actually. Yeah, that'll yeah, be easier you. for you guys to click and yeah. look at that. Yeah, read! Yeah. So, <laughs> can you, you also send that into the Discord? I sure can. So, uh, guys, unravel this note, and you see inside of it reads 19 Tarsak, which is uh, a date. Uh, it says, our journey is ended, though I fear my own is to continue in the most horrible way imaginable. Compass rose wrecked on a shoal south of Neverwinter. Many sailors perished with the initial impact, and Althea was gravely injured. As I tended her wounds, she clutched her talisman and breathed soft prayers. I asked her what the talisman signified. She told me love. Her husband waits for her at Dragon's Rest, having pledged his service to the dragons there. The talisman is made from locks of their hair, woven together as a promise to be reunited no matter what fate might befall them. It might have been a beautiful story had it not been for Althea's gruesome end and the words of the prayer I heard as she breathed her last, for she was begging Orcus, the prince of undeath, to reunite her with her husband. I held her hands as the breath left her, and I felt a horrible chill pass through her. Next I knew she was sinking her teeth into my neck. At the same moment, I heard moans begin to rise from the dead sailors all around us. What curse has she brought on us all. Already I feel a creeping chill overtaking my body. I am securing her talisman with this book in my chest in the hope that someone who comes after us may end this nightmare by bringing Althea's talisman to her husband. Hmm. Well, I think we need to find her husband. I Do you think, think anyone we... at Dragon's Rest would know? We can definitely ask around. Do I get anything from reading this with, like, Orcus? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely you do. Um, you get the very uneasy feeling, of, as, especially as a, a god of undeath is mentioned here, and your mind reels to that the shadows lingering over the island consuming it all okay that one is for langston's mental vault um out of reading that and just the chills you see langston just cast light for some reason just 
and some eddies a little bit, a little like orb of light comes out. And I'm just like, okay, there we go. Peace of mind. Peace of and mind. Can't get you. Darkness can't get you. He's fine. So after reading that, um, I'm like looking around in the chest and I'm like, I obviously take the boots and the gold pieces along with this, mm -hmm. this scroll. Um, but like, I don't see a talisman in the chest. So as and you, so like I kind of, I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, as you fully unravel the, the wrapping, you see the talisman laid in there formed of long locks of hair some blonde some black the braided together knotted around two small finger bones it's chilling yep and i go ahead and throw that in the bag as well and then i see prick kind of wandering off i'm like now oh, what well, what is he doing yeah and I'm uh just walking with purpose yeah, Langston, just one more thing about Orcus also, that you would know, of course, that he is the demon prince of undeath, uh, the blood lord also known as, um, and his powers, they really rival that of gods. He rules over hordes of demons uh, in the nightmarish plane of existence that is the abyss itself, and uh, he yearns to transform the multiverse into a ghastly place of death, which, of course, is like why your mind goes to that shadowy uh, figure shrouding over the island and many many undead creatures like ghouls uh they worship him and they seek to bargain with him in exchange for just a f small fragment of his power fantastic the visions are getting clearer and this is not ideal um i made a note of all of that and just am, like you know gonna bring that up later when we're back at the island um Perfect. Did I get a chance to at least look at the, like, you know, any type of the, like, scribblings or any engravings on the talisman before it was put into the bag? Uh, Good. yeah, I'm sure Manto probably allowed you. Uh, can I, like, tap him and be like, Manto, I'm sorry, this is, you know, kind of dealing with the, you know, religious, if you will, some of the higher powers at the, would you mind if I inspected the talisman before we put it away? Yeah, I kind taking of, taking your I, loot. like, I'm, like, kind of, like, giving him, like, an eye, and I'm, like lowly and reluctantly like handing over the talisman as he's handing it to me i hold my like medit like my healer's kit i'm like brother i sold all my gold for bandages do you really think i'm gonna <laughs> steal anything from you and then i'll like graciously take it out of his hand i like treasure okay i i understand i respect that you have my word this is just an inspection and I'll just kind of, like, look at the designs, the engravings on it, just see, like, if it's anything I've seen before, and just also, you know, verify if it's, like, the symbol of Orcus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and make a, uh, you can do Arcana or Religion check. Ooh, you know what? Let's mix it up with Religion. And that's a nine. Okay. Tell uh, you what, anything magic, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you observe it and definitely can feel this evil necrotic energy emanating <clears throat> from it uh it's strange the way the bones and the hair braid together hold it together like that uh but there's no real symbols for you to make out or that you're able to make out and discern uh true meaning of on this currently uh you think that um if you don't maybe have the answers for it maybe Runera could maybe provide some help for you that can be done for sure. So it's pretty much just like a talisman made just to kind of, and then like self-honoring Orcus, not like it's something from that, like... No, it, it seems like it's, would. um... Yeah, it was, Not exactly sure, like... It's definitely some sort of dedication to Orcus, and you're not sure if, like, you know, this talisman, as it reads in the letters, made from locks of their hair woven together as a promise to be reunited no matter what f fate might befall them. And you kind of reel that in your okay. mind, like, what exactly does that mean? Does the talisman have powers of what kind? Okay. That is also filed away, and I will hand it back to uh, Manto and be like, thank you for letting me inspect this. As... I don't think I'll ever need to hold this again. <laughs> As he hands it to me, I instead, like, put the scroll in his hand and, like, sh with the talisman and shut his hand and, like, push it back into his chest. And I'm like, 
you might be better off you know, holding on to this and uh, kind of keeping your mind on it than myself. I'm here for the treasure. This seems more up your alley, Come, coming to terms, so. All right, well, no time like the present to conquer some fears, so I uh, will just, like, stare at it way too long and then just, like, put it in my pack and just get it out of sight and be like, okay, we'll come back to this later. Okay, get it out of here. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Crick, where the hull of the ship has been cracked open, the murky waters of the seafloor can be seen beyond that, and you see some dim shapes of other wrecks visible. As you look out that way, you feel a yearning, a pooling to you, as you see a faint white light shimmering from the seafloor. I kind of look back at the crow and just look at them like yearningly for a second and then look back to the white light, look back at them, and then I just start walking towards the, the white light. Okay. You guys see Crick walking further and further this way now. As you do, you see, <clears throat> excuse me, massive dragon bones uh, dragging across the ground down here, uh, amongst which, as you, Crick now begins to swim further and further out as he feels like he's being called to something. Uh, maybe he swims out about another 100 feet uh, to maybe 300 feet away from where he is currently as this white light is calling to him like a beacon under here. And as you swim closer to this now, Crick, you see an ancient wreck that has been all but consumed by the sea and sea worms and rot and you can only see the faintest lines of its hull and mass that's still visible in the muck and sea sand in the sea floor here. And you can see what look like tentacles coming out from this ship down here and the hull of it, the body of it, is almost like a like a like a, sh a, a men uh, some sort of seashell and you get this strange feeling of recognition and you see where the currents have shipped that sand begin to lap up against it you see a, a melon sized white stone sits in a cradle there in the center of the wreck and across its mottled surface, you see motes of pale light that glint like stars. I would kind of motion over to the guys to kind of wave them down um, to look at this as I, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of like a dream that I had a long time ago with, you know, just random kind of large ships that you know kind of had their own minds of that nature so because i love a good ship and i just kind of go forward um really interested in what's in this this kind of pearl in the middle yeah yeah um do you yeah. guys yeah follow him so i don't know how long we've been down here but before i follow him i stick my head out of the steps again and <laughs> <laughs> and that and then I come back and I follow Craig. Okay. I, uh, Wait, did you, did you not eat a, a mushroom? <laughs> oh, I didn't catch the mushroom part. Well, I guess I did. <laughs> Said the Crick, but I am very mistrustful of any <clears throat> sort of light, anything like that. So I'm going with Craig, but. I'm more so going in case shit goes down, which I'm expecting it to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Crick, as you go on over here, I, what I just sent in the game log is essentially what you see. Uh, what you see, though, is a lot more derelict and dilapidated. There's not actually like much of a structure to it uh, anymore. Uh, nothing to really explore or anything inside of there, but you see this brilliant, beautiful, white, melon-sized stone that has like stars shining all over it. And uh you kinda of reach touch it. Reach out and grab it perfectly. And uh as your hands touch it, finally, you feel this overwhelming sense of purpose. As if you're truly finally discovering oneself. And you feel an innate connection with this thing. Uh 
but you are still unsure of the nature of it or the roots of it. I would... Is there like a... You know, like how some ships have like the name crest along the back or something like that. Is there like a name on the ship or... Um, as you try to scan around the sides of it, um, it looks like due to ages and time being washed away under the sandy waters on here, if there was a name on the ship, you don't seem to see one right now. I just kind of make a take a big mental picture of this kind of ship as 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 you know, I kind of notice like some of the some of the structures of it are kind of similar to some of the ships that I helped drive in the sea of the moving ice a little bit and you know, I kind of try to chip off a piece of the stone and then kind of head back with the guys as I give them you know I turn around give them you know, longing look, and then look back at this, but, I mean, I clearly can't move this thing out of the water. The stone? No, the the ship. Uh, you <laughs> I gotcha. try to take the stone. Yeah, 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 you yeah. absolutely, you take oh, the stone, yeah. uh, certainly, but yeah, um, you leave the ship behind with nothing but your memory, a little fragment of it. Uh, mm -hmm. In your mind, you're, you're trying to recall memories of, you know, your past, uh, ships and things that you serviced and worked on and although like you're starting to have these recollections this here doesn't necessarily feel like home to you but it feels like a destination that was in mind okay. let's head back to the guys and with one final look back at the ship, we've got other things to do. With this melon-sized white stone glowing like stars in his hands, uh, you guys make your way back down to this, the hold in the ship here, and uh, free to do as you will now. It's probably been close to an hour since Crick has gone down here and uh, investigated a little bit, so imagine you guys are wrapping up your time of your your wind spore mushrooms. Yep. Okay. Langston's eyes bug out of his head just a little <laughs> bit, and he just goes, oh, and then he spooks it for the stairs. All right. Um, Away we go. Back up the stairs, you guys go one by one. Uh, let me take you guys back to the main deck. Yeah, this this whole time Crick was just like walking on the floor to, like it's no big deal. You just have <laughs> so many talents. I'm sorry. Um, ba -ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Okay, as you guys make your way up back to the main deck, as you're climbing up these stairs, you begin to hear these terrifying mon uh, screeches as a monster perches on top of the crow's nest. Uh, you guys look up as you see it spreading its scraggly wings and screeching harshly up there. And its wings and legs resemble those of a mangly vulture, while its head, torso, and arms look almost human. And it clutches a large bone-like club and flexes its talons as it looks up to the sky and screeches once more, spreading its wings wide. And that is where we will pick it up the next time we get together. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> the yeah, fuck so is that? It's a long-haired <laughs> smeagol if I've ever there seen it. There you go. Hey, that, it just <laughs> sends the, the, the headshot. <laughs> that's a heart picture, picture, right? Yeah. Is that there Russell Brand? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's Taurus's new actor headshots. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the new, the new headshots. Hilarious. Xander, come get your boy. He done nutted. So you guys are all ready. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as you guys all see this all. screeching <laughs> half-human, half-mangly yeah. vulture-like creature up on the crow's nest <laughs> holding a club. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and pick it up here the next time we get together, as this thing is looking pissed. Um, great game, guys. Nice short one. <clears throat> Got a lot of stuff done, I feel like. Oh, uh, yeah. Anything we want to uh, touch on before we wrap it up? I, 
I put in the game log, but everyone had the 14 gold pieces. Okay. Um, mm. And then I've went ahead and in my notes added the boots with the leaves on it. And then just, I guess, the stuff that I found. So, but yeah, make sure you add the gold pieces in there. Oh. Cool. 14 man. each. Awesome, guys. Um, Appreciate you. Beautiful. We will, uh, I'm going to Vegas Good on Thursday, doubt. guys. So. Fuck. Ooh, yeah, fun, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm, I'm gonna drive for the day. So Dead and Company uh, is playing, and nice. Greg's gonna be out there. So I'm gonna meet him out there, and I'm gonna be there for <laughs> 24 hours, and then I'll drive back on Friday. <laughs> I said, I said, pay one month's mortgage, and I'd come out. I mean, they're giving away money there, so you can get <laughs> yeah, that there. You're right. You did that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. Thanks for playing. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll look out for those goblins under the stairs. We'll catch you guys on Sunday next time. Peace out, y'all. Later, guys. Peace. You're on, boss. Bye.